At the end of the 19th century, one of the most important European singers of the time, the French and Judic, triumphed in Spain, Mexico and Cuba, singing one of the most popular flamenco songs of the time, the Petenera. In episode 31st of the podcast for Grand Sons of Flamenco, I will tell you who Anne Judic was, how she arrived to Spain and where she learned to sing the Peteneras. And you will also be able to listen to her voice in this episode. <laughs> Sounds that once were listened. Sounds that once were enjoyed. Sounds that once were danced. Sounds relegated to oblivion. And yet, there is still something we can do for them. Let us summon them. Let us summon them. Welcome to the podcast Forgotten Sounds of Flamenco. My name is Jose Miguel Hernandez Jaramillo, and I invite you to enroll in this journey through the sounds, stories, spaces, and people that were part of the 19th century flamenco. Hello, and welcome to a new episode of the podcast for Grand Sounds of Flamenco, dedicated to talking about a person with an incredible story who participated in the 19th century flamenco scene. As it is usual in this podcast, if you look for this person's name in flamenco books, I could dare to assure you that you will not find it. Our protagonist today is the French soprano Anna Judic. Her full name was Anne-Marie-Louise Damiens, but she adopted her husband's surname when she married at just 16 years old. She was born in semir en ochois a town in central France, in 1849. However, some biographies indicate that she was born in 1850 and died in a village of the French Riviera at 61. She began studying at the Paris Conservatory at the age of 15, where her teachers complained about her constant lack of application and where she spent very little time, only one year as she began to perform at the Theatre of Gymnase and the Café El Dorado. Her fame came as a comic soprano within the genre called buffo or operetta, which became so fashionable in France at the decade of the 1860s. She became part of the company of the Parisian buffos, where she triumphed singing some works by Jacques Offenbach. What is not well known about Anna Judic's biography is that she also sang flamenco. Anna was preparing a tour in Spain in 1884 when a cholera epidemic broke out. Upon entering Spain, she is in the border and must spend a quarantine period in the Lazareto in Irún. It seems that the great Spanish tenor Julián Gallarre visited her and taught her the most fashionable song in Spain at that moment, the Petenera. Once she passed the quarantine, she arrived in Madrid with great expectation from the public because she was already a great star on the Parisian scene. A Madrid newspaper announced it in the following way. Among all the lyrical and dramatic artists who in recent times have come to acquire universal renown, the famous Anna Judic stands out first, the start, the goddess of the Paris Variety Theatre, who has been among us since yesterday. The first concert in Madrid was on October 5 of that year, and in the chronicle of this performance, it appears that in the vaudeville title Mademoiselle Nitouche, she included some peteneras. This text even tells us which petenera lyrics she sang. I read you a fragment of this chronicle. In the second act, she pleasantly surprised the audience singing some peteneras that, as she indicated, she had learned in the Lazareto. The delirium of the audience was indescriptible when she, with her delicacy and a delicious feeling, said that song so poetic and so popular in Andalusia. I have two kisses in my soul that do not depart from me, the last of my mother and the first one I gave you. Performance after performance, Judith's success increased, among other things, for singing the peteneras. In another chronicle of those days, we can read the following. Anna Judic has extraordinary qualities for the stage, particularly for vaudeville and operetta, genres in which she has made her reputation. She has a gallant presence, an expressive countenance, and a sweet and friendly voice, which she handles with notable mastery, incomparable skill in saying, and a marvelous faculty of assimilation. Thus, she has been able to enthuse the Madrid public singing peteneras with consummate art. From now on, it can be predicted that the peteneras will make the Tour de l'Europe internationalism through flamenco singing. 
Anna Judic performed in Madrid from October 5 to 1884. King Alfonso XII, several ministers, and many members of the Madrid aristocracy attended her farewell performance at the Theater of the Zarzuela. The proceeds from that performance were 32,000 pesetas, of which for Anna was 8,000, which was a fortune then. In that last performance, she also performed the comedy A Feng A Papa, from which we are hearing the Coronel's song, recorded by Anna Judic around 1901. This recording corresponds to a wax cylinder preserved in the archive of audio cylinders from the University of California at Santa Barbara. Although I don't have evidence that she recorded the peteneras, at least we can hear what Anna Judic's voice was. After that last performance, Anna attended a flamenco party before leaving Madrid, where she could sing alongside flamenco artists. I read you a fragment of this journalistic chronicle that narrates it. The Judic had desired to attend a flamenco singing and dancing party. For this purpose, she was invited. She had fun watching the dancers with movements of oriental almis with their oriental movements and hearing those original melodies of the most classic flamenco songs can't be described. She will surely keep fond memories of last night's original party. As was natural, she said goodbye singing peteneras, and even the flamenco singer applauded. She moved from Madrid to Barcelona a few weeks later, where the newspapers announced her as follows. Very soon we will have the Judic here, not here in the editorial office, unfortunately, but in Barcelona. It is preceded by a colossal hype due to the song peteneras that took away the people of Madrid. The following year, in 1885, she performed again for a few weeks in Madrid, and a chronicle gave us a hint that, in addition to the peteneras, she also sang other flamenco songs. Speaking of theaters, the diva promise for next December, Ana Judic, is currently singing in Madrid's Zarzuela, where she delights the sovereign of the town and the people, singing peteneras and other songs from the flamenco repertoire. At the end of 1885, Anna Judic toured America, initially including 209 performances in three different countries, United States, Mexico, and Cuba. She was in Mexico City from January 1st to 21st, 1886. From the chronicles of her performances, we know that she also sang the peteneras. One of them said the following. These days, she has repeated the Borsons and Mademoiselle Nituch with brilliant success, the Judic providing in the last piece her varied talent and driving the audience crazy in the peteneras she sang with great grace. In other words, her peteneras also drove the Mexican public. In fact, a score titled Peteneras de Ana Judic, Petenera from Ana Judic, was published in this country and arranged, and arranged for piano by José de Rivas. It is likely that this piece, which we are already listening to, picks up the melody of the peteneras that Anna sang. Let's listen to a little bit more.
from Mexico, she went to Havana and look at what the press highlight from her performance in Cuban lands. This charming artist has driven the Havana public crazy with her art and grace, and the company's season in that city continues to be exceptionally brilliant. The peteneras have made such a deep impression there that Ana Judic has to sing them every night at the audience's request. Therefore, Ana Judic's peteneras also became a sensation among the Havana public. We will listen to another work titled Fantasía sobre las Peteneras, or Peteneras Fantasy, dedicated to Ana Judic by its composer, Damazo Zabalza. It is an incredible piece, probably inspired by the echoes that Ana Judic's Peteneras left in Madrid. Almost four years ago, Lenny Carreyes and I produced a small video of this encounter between Ana Judic and Flamenco. If you want, you can watch it on the YouTube channel Sonidos Olvidados en No Musicología Creativa, that is the same channel where the episodes of this podcast are published. In addition to many other contents related to sounds that were unfortunately forgotten and to which we are trying to give a new life. If you want to contribute to this project for free, I would ask you to subscribe to this channel and spread the contents you like among your contacts. It is a small gesture, but of enormous importance for this project. Well, I hope you like this episode and that you learn a little more about how 19th century flamenco scene was structured, not only in Spain, but also in other countries such as Mexico or Cuba, and how those barriers between academic music and flamenco were much more subdued than today. We have already seen it, we have already seen it in different episodes of this podcast. And in this case, lyrical singers as Ana Judic singing flamenco was not an exception, but something very common in those times. Well, I hope you have a great weekend and see you here again in two weeks. <laughs> <laughs>